In this video, we are going to be learning about how sedimentary rocks form. We need to go through three separate processes to make a really good sedimentary rock. We need to do weathering, erosion, and deposition. We're going to start with the weathering of rocks. When you weather a rock, you take a large piece of rock and you break it down into smaller pieces of rock called sediments. There's a couple different ways you can do this. If you want to do this physically, like actually break apart a rock, whether you're Bugs Bunny or whether you are a river or a glacier or what have you, if you're taking a large rock and physically breaking it apart into smaller pieces, then you are doing what's called mechanical weathering. That's one type of weathering. But you can also take a rock and dissolve it chemically. This happens with limestone all the time. One of the reasons why acid rain is so damaging to certain buildings and structures is because it actually contains enough acid to just start to barely dissolve up the limestone that's found in a lot of ancient sites. This is called chemical weathering. But regardless of whether you're doing mechanical weathering or chemical weathering, the end result is that you have sediment. You take a large chunk of rock, you break it up, and you end up with sediment, smaller pieces of rock like sand or pebbles or gravel. Next, let's talk about erosion. Erosion is what happens when sediments are moved to a new location. So in weathering, we broke up a rock into sediments. Now we're going to move those sediments someplace new. This can happen through water, rivers, can, uh, waterfalls. The ocean can move sediments around. It can happen through wind. Wind can blow sediments around, especially in desert areas. And it could happen simply through gravity. A great example of how gravity can move sediments is Yosemite Valley. Yosemite Valley has very steep sides and they have rock falls all the time. And those rock falls are caused simply by gravity. And if you get a big enough erosional event, well then you get to have a landslide. Landslides are like erosion on steroids. It's erosion gone crazy. But either way, the end result, whether you're using water, wind, gravity, or a combination of all three, you end up with sediments in motion. Let's move on next to deposition. In deposition, those sediments are dropped in a new location. Sediments are almost always laying down horizontally. Now we're getting into the sedimentary rocks that we are familiar with. These make that sort of layer cake or sandwich looking structures made up of rocks. Now they're all, almost, I said almost always laid down horizontally because there are some examples where they haven't been. But even if they are laid down horizontally, that doesn't mean they're gonna stay that way. Here's a photo of some sedimentary rocks in the Merid Headlands of California. This is in the Bay Area, north of San Francisco. And what this looks like really is like a kindergartner got a hold of a stack of paper and crumpled it. Those rocks were originally laid down horizontally, but then they were crumpled by something big. And the toddler, or the kindergartner in this example, is actually the San Andreas Fault. The San Andreas Fault north of San Francisco took nice, clean, even, horizontal layers and smushed them into what's known as the Marin Headlands Chert. If you want to find this rock uh, face, you can find it super easy if you go north on the Golden Gate Bridge and then head towards the coast. If you are interested in fossils, then you are also interested in deposition. If you are a critter that was unfortunate enough to get stuck in a depositional event, or if you are already dead and your hard parts just happen to be laying around, then deposition of sediments could trap those hard parts in a rock and bury them deep underground, and we end up with fossils. Sedimentary rocks and deposition can also give you some kind of a clue as to what the environment was like when those sediments were deposited. And I don't mean the ecological environment in this case. What I'm really talking about is what was going on to make those sediments deposit the way they did. This is an example of Point Lobos, California. This is south of Monterey on the California coastline. And there's very distinct different layers found here. And as a trained sedimentologist, I can tell that that thick layer of sand right there had to have been laying down when it was relatively calm because fast moving water is gonna keep that sand going. But if it's calm, then the sand is able to settle out and deposit in these big thick layers. Whereas these chunky layers here, boy, that has to be a landslide or a flood or some other big major event. And again, as a sedimentologist, I can look 
at that series of rocks and say, wow, that part of the coastline has been calm and then crazy and then calm and then crazy and then calm and then crazy over and over again because you can see the rocks as they piled up. That's deposition. So let's quickly review. In weathering, you have a rock that gets broken down into sediments. In erosion, those sediments get moved. And in deposition, those sediments are dropped in a new location to form sedimentary rocks. And that's it. You guys are now experts on weathering erosion and deposition. Thank you.